Welcome back, Flare community, to the third instalment of the podcast series. In the last episode, I covered a high-level overview of the Flare network, what it is hoping to achieve, and what separates it from the rest. In this episode, we will be covering one of the core components of the Flare network, the Flare Time Series Oracle, or FTSO, as it's commonly known. This suggestion comes from Anna Coexist Crypto, who happens to be the very first sponsor of the Flare Community channel. Thank you, Anna. As promised, 10XRP is coming your way for suggesting today's podcast topic. So let's get started. The Flare Time Series Oracle. What is it? Well, The FTSO is an integral part of the Flare network and is responsible for providing price estimates to other components and applications running on top of the network. I like to use the analogy of a beating heart to symbolize the function of the FTSO. As the heart pumps blood around the body at regular intervals, the FTSO will frequently pulse price data throughout the Flare network. It's important to get accurate prices for various integrated assets so that the Flare network can function correctly. An example of why the price of various assets is important is during the F asset minting process. As we know, to mint F assets on the Flare network, collateral has to be provided in Spark by agents at the ratio of 2.5 times the value of the originating asset. For example, if we wanted to mint FXRP on the Flare network and each XRP was valued at $1, agents would have to provide $2.5 worth of Spark tokens to collateralize the F asset, allowing it to be minted in a trustless and risk-free manner. It is essential to get accurate price data for this reason, not just for the integrated F assets, but also for the Spark token itself. So that's great. We know why these price feeds are so important, and we know that the Flare Time Series Oracle provides these prices, but we don't necessarily know how. Let me tell you, it's magical. In order to get accurate price data, we cannot just rely on a single source, for example, CoinMarketCap. That would render the estimate centralized as it relies on a single entity. What would happen if CoinMarketCap becomes unavailable, for example? The Flare network would halt, and we don't want that. So what's the logical solution? That's right, add more sources. How about collecting price estimates from several exchanges and why not aggregate the data to create an average too? But wait, there's more. Now imagine this process of collecting data from various sources and calculating what is believed to be the true price of an asset was then offloaded to participants of the network. Yes, that's right. Welcome data providers. Data providers, well, provide data as you would expect. Each data provider will have their own proprietary algorithm to calculate what they believe to be the true price of an asset at a specific time. Many variables could play a factor. Specific exchanges, for example, weighted differently on how much volume they provide. Data providers can be a single entity, a company, or an exchange, for example. 
So what is their incentive to build these programs and provide data to the FTSO? Well, this is where the FTSO rewards come in. You may be aware that the Spark token is in fact inflationary. The current inflation rate is set at 10% each year, with these additional tokens being used as an incentive to pay the data providers who provide the most accurate data. So let's discuss how this actually works. So the FTSO receives price feeds from multiple data providers, aggregates this data and performs some calculations and then outputs a true decentralized price to be used by the Flare network and all applications built on top of it. This is why the FTSO is considered the heartbeat of the Flare network. The Flare network hosts numerous ways to generate a passive income. If you are a holder of the Flare network's native token, Spark, you have access to two different votes, a governance vote and also a data provider vote. This data provider vote can earn you Spark if used correctly. You are able to detach your vote from your Spark and choose a data provider who you believe will provide accurate prices. If their input is close enough to the output of the FTSO, they will receive a reward. And if you delegated your vote to them, you will earn a reward too. Now, you may be wondering which data provider should I vote for? Well, each data provider will be different and likely to have their own unique incentives. These details have not yet been revealed, but you can expect data providers to declare how much commission they will take and any additional benefits, which will make for a very competitive selection to choose from. If you would like a visual aid to accompany the explanation of the Flare Time Series Oracle, be sure to check out the video linked above. Finally, I would like to remind you that if you comment below with a topic you would like to see in the next episode and I pick the comment, I will send you 10 XRP and that's with every podcast episode. If you enjoyed the video, a free way to support the channel is by simply giving it a like. And if you're new here, why not subscribe? That's all I have for you in this episode. I want you all to enjoy the rest of your day and until next time, I'm out.